Hi everyone. Uh, I, this is something different. I don't normally do product reviews at all, uh, but I thought I would do a little product review on my new tonic um, media mat, my glass media mat. Um, it is tempered, so I have done things like emboss. Um, you know, I just kind of lay it down and it, it heats up. However, the glass does stay hot for a while, so you need to be aware of that. Um, let's start by saying I love it. I, I, it's one of my best purchases. I personally love it. Um, I love that it has the, the grid. I love that it's not, uh, you can't feel it. It's still really smooth, so it's not going to wear off. Um, you've got your uh, wet medium over here. I kept the little plastic sheeting over it and I just taped it at the bottom just so I could flip it over when I want to use it. Um, it does peel off so underneath here I'm sure you've watched the Tim Holtz demonstration where he just adds his little ink here and then you can use it as a palette uh, because this is glass as well so it's totally washable. This you can take right off, take it to the sink, rinse it right off um, and it works great. I just keep that on there because I tend to use this as my work area. Now when I watched his video, um, I, I totally agree with what he said. As I'm working, things creep closer and closer and closer till you're working in an area like this size, right? And then it becomes like very difficult um, to create because my brain just stops working. So having this area, which is a very nice um, length. This here is 15 inches, I think. Oh, it's no, it's 18 inches here plus this. So it's quite a good size work surface. And and what I do with this because I don't use this side as much as I use this. So I will have stuff like this. <laughs> I do it like this. I have my scoreboard. Then I have my mini cutter. And I still have this nice little work area here. And if I need to, you know, use this, it's an, it's an easy move. But nothing's creeping up because, like he said, he designed, he wanted them to design it so it had little feet on the bottom. So it's actually off your craft mat. So things kind of hit the edge, like it comes up here, right? Instead of ending up here, which is kind of good in a way, too. What I like about that is you can actually slide a couple pieces of, um, paper underneath that you know you're going to work on but you know it's in the way so just shove it under there. <laughs> anyway I love it but what I wanted to do was show you a couple of things that I've kind of discovered using it. One, um, your glue doesn't rub off like it would on your craft mat. On your brown craft mat you can uh, usually just wipe it up uh, it doesn't stick because it's Teflon coated. This is not the same. Now, having said that, it does come off really easy. If you're using a glue that is water-based, just take your spritzer, give it a spritz, and then paper towel it off. And it cleans up beautifully. Now, if, if it's pretty thick, or like I, I find personally that uh, if I end up with like say big pieces you know thick then I bought these uh, I have two sizes and what they are is a, a glass scraper for stovetops and I happen to have a glass top stovetop so the bigger one I keep in my kitchen but it came with this little mini one which is pretty cool so I thought hey perfect I'll use it here now Tim does sell one that you can buy um, that is meant for this. Uh, I personally didn't want to wait <laughs> and I don't know how expensive they are for Canadians because um, I don't know the price but I do know that I got this scraper at my kitchen store and it was $14 for both of them so and that's, and that's Canadian dollars you know so probably I, I'm gonna say it's five more than five dollars 
uh, cheaper for me to have done this than, you know, to buy the other. However, I'm not 100% certain, but I think it's bundled with, it might not be, but there's a, a road, like a straight edge that you can hook on here, and that's really cool, but I have one of these, so yeah, I didn't really need it. I'm trying not to get stuff just because it's there. Uh, what I'm going to do is pop this up. So I just stick a, a stamp pad underneath that because I'm finding that my camera is not... Uh, it, everything looks on an angle, so I thought I'd do that. Anyway, uh, getting back to the glue. If you're finding, you know, you've got a thick piece, you can just take your glass scraper and just scrape it off. And like I said before, you can... I wouldn't use a chemical, I would simply use water. Spray it with water, wipe it down, and it comes out beautiful. And if you run your hand along it and you find any raised spots, then, you know, you can just go ahead. There was one right there, and it scrapes right off. It's perfect. Now, when you're using permanent ink, like um, this one here, you won't see it. It is permanent. So that's black, and that's the arc. Um, what is it? Vista, uh, Versifying Claire, and it's black. So this will wipe up if you get it right away. If you let it dry, just do what Tim does. And I, I got this at the dollar store. It's just a little hand sanitizer. You need so little of it, just a little tiny. That's it and just wipe it. It comes right off. And then it's sparkling clean again. So I'm loving this. Um, like I said, works great for me as a work surface. It's great for lining, you know, when I'm trying to stamp. Um, I do have my stamp, what do you call that thingy? Um, I'll show you. This as well. It's also Tim Holtz tonic. Now, I know yours is an orange, right? <laughs> this is Fun Foam from the dollar store. And this does come with a foam back. So it is um, slip resistant. But this, I find, doesn't offer enough cushion, especially for some of my stamps. Now, this is not my idea originally. I did see somebody else do this on YouTube. And I thought it was brilliant because I have loads of this stuff. And all I did was double-sided tape um, just to, you know, stop it from moving around. And you can still, as you can see, it still magnetizes, um, no problem at all. And uh, it helps with impressing uh, your stamps, especially if you have some like mine where... Yeah, sometimes they just need that cushion to go down because they're not deeply grooved. And I find it extremely frustrating when you're, you know, stamping on a flat surface. And I've I've done foam, you know, for a long time, but with blocks, right? And I thought, well, why can't I do that on here? It it works great. So there's another tip for you. If you end up with this, which I love, again, because I'm not a great stamper, but if I'm putting something down on here, you know, and I want to line it up, like, I don't know, I'll just randomly pull out some ephemera. And I want to line it up for whatever reason, I want to draw a line or whatever, you know, you've got all these lovely squares and, you know, you just line your ruler up along the line there or this way and, you know, works perfect. This was a brilliant design, uh, I, I feel, and like I say, totally worth it, especially when you're in your craft room every day like I am. Okay, the other thing I wanted to, to talk about is I'm just finishing off um, that journal that I had accidentally sold two of, <laughs> so I'm almost finished, and um, you know, there was a few things that I discovered along the way, and one was dealing with stamps. I thought I would pass this along. You, you know, you, this is not brain surgery. Honestly, you've probably even done it yourself. But for those who are new to crafting and want the best results when you're stamping, um, 
I know I've watched several people and what they do to clean their stamps and you know basically I use a ratty old um, cloth this this <laughs> you can see it's well used and I just wipe them down but over time what happens is you will get a buildup of ink in the grooves of your stamps um, so let me grab a box of stamps just a random box of stamps. I have no idea what's in this box. Oh, perfect. This will work. Okay, so for instance, this is really sticky because uh, this is one that I had converted off of a, a wooden wooden stamp. And um, yeah, I put that uh, sticky stuff. Uh, tacket. Aileen's tacket over and over. I think that's what it's called. Something like that. Anyway, when you're stamping, okay, you know, you say it's a favorite stamp, you use it all the time, and you've you you know you wipe it off every time. You're doing a good job there. But if you can see, it's got really fine lines in it that give it texture when you stamp it out. It doesn't look like much, but when you stamp it out, it's actually quite lovely. I'll just uh, grab a piece of paper here and my black because I think it shows up the best and for things like this VersaFine is your best bet you're going to end up with a nice crisp uh, stamp so and then another trick keep your finger in the middle of your stamp pad right because if you're doing this you're not going to get ink in the center likely so I just keep it and and I kind of push down as I'm going so that's one one tip then I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp this out now it'll probably do really well yeah it did because I don't use it much but if I just wipe that off and I've used it I don't know six or seven times eventually that ink builds up in those little crevices so let's I'm gonna um, telephoto in because I wanted you to see the workstation, so I, uh, yeah, I cranked it up. <laughs> oh, this has got, yeah, I accidentally printed these like 15,000 times, so <laughs> it's like uh, scrap paper. Anyway, it's very detailed, this butterfly. But over time, it will build up, in, especially in these little shallow ones, and so, what I do is, I, I use this one, Grandma's, Grandma's Secret Rubber Stamp Cleaner. Um, I got that at my local craft store. And I don't know why it did this, though, but whatever. There's all different kinds of rubber stamp cleaners. Um, and all I do is, I don't even spray it. I just take it out, and then I just rub it on here. It doesn't even have to be perfect, you know, like, just get some cleaner on there. And then, of course, my trusty toothbrush. And all I do is just swirl it around. It gets nicely into the cracks. And you can tell by how grungy that is that it, it definitely takes off a lot. Okay, then you take your cloth, just wipe it down. Look how nice and clean that comes out, right? And depending on how bad your stamp is, you know. Then spritz it with water, especially the acrylic ones. I find that it once you put that stamp cleaner on them, it sticks like crazy to the paper when you're using it again. And if you have to double stamp, well, it's moved your paper. Right, even though you've got those magnets set down there, but it'll move your it'll move your paper, and then good luck lining that up again. So I use water just uh, to wipe the residue of the cleaning solution off there. Now, if if you've watched my video on um, you know fixing your wooden block stamps and turning them into you know almost a the thickness of a clear stamp they're not they're a little wider but uh, if you're changing them over uh, 
and you've watched my video <clears throat> and I use that tack it over I mean it's it's like denture cream right da -da. but uh, I had found that if I don't pull it off the block properly that the foam will separate from the rubber now I used um, Aileen super tacky glue to adhere the two together I no longer do that I use like Gorilla Glue or you know something like that but I didn't readjust all my stamps I kind of do it, it when I use the stamp and then I find it separating I just dab a little bit of a uh, Gorilla Glue but it, it they last a lot longer if when you're taking them off the block you get your finger right under the foam okay and then pull it and you should be good I am so happy I did this. It took forever, but I'm so happy I did this. And because for storage reasons, right? I like wooden blocks. I Honestly, I do. But for storage reasons, you know, I just don't have the room to store all those wooden stamps. And huh, yeah, I got a lot of stamps, you guys. So this is what I did. Now, the other thing is sometimes you get these acrylic doohickeys that no longer stick. And I've cleaned them, and I've dried them, and I clean my block. They still don't stick. So again, use the Aileen's. And don't put it on too thin or and then try it out too soon. Because if you do that and you stick it to a block, when you take it off, yeah, all the glue stays on the block. Make sure you put enough on, though. If it's too thin, it peels off really easy. So that's just another trick. Let me see if I can find that glue so I can show you and make sure I'm telling you the right glue. Um, because I pulled out two. That one's the wrong one. It is this one. Yeah, I was right. That's what it's called. Tack it over and over. That's what it looks like. I don't know if it's still the same packaging because I've had this for a long time. And you can get it on Amazon, you know, if you're in Canada. You can't find it at your local craft store. There's so few craft stores around anymore that sometimes it's difficult for us in Canada to find products. Uh, what else was I going to tell you? I think that was probably it. Um, yeah, like I say, just a, a you know, few little tips and tricks. Um, because I haven't done one in a really, really long time. I've been super busy. But, um, yeah, you know, sometimes you're just working and you and boom, an idea. And you're like, oh, I need to film that. So I took a break from doing the journal. I am now working on the cover and it's done. So uh, I hope to mail that out Tuesday. And then I'm starting on Graceful Women. That will be my next journal. I'm really looking forward to making that book and um, if if I get enough people saying yeah I want to see you know craft along as I'm making the journal if there's enough people who say yeah do it then I'll do it but if not then I'll just wait and show you when I'm done although who knows when that takes <laughs> takes place <laughs> anyway it's drizzly and kind of gloomy here so not a very nice day perfect day for crafting Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye.